In this installment of the APOC video series, we want to look into data integration, meaning how we can get data from other databases into Neo4j. Um, today we want to look at uh, using JDBZ for that, and uh, basically APOC has a bunch of different procedures for loading data from relational databases. So you can use APOC load JDBZ to just uh, pull um, either table or statements from a uh, relational database, or you can also use uh, JDBZ params if you want to use um, prepared statements that have parameters in there. And for updates, you can even write updates to a relational database. Um, we want to look at uh, epoch load JDBC this time. So for this, we also have to do something else, which is putting the JDBC driver into our plugins folder. So if you go to Neo4j desktop and plugins, or into your Neo4j installation into home plugins, then you see besides APOC, I also put the MySQL uh, connected there. And uh, MySQL, because I have got a MySQL database running here uh, that has the Northwind database, which you are all uh, very familiar with and know. So we have um, our regular retail system tables here. And here's, for instance, the product table. And we see we have 77 products and a bunch of products that you, that you see here. So and let's see how we can access this data now from Neo4j. So basically, I have restarted my, my database and have the uh, MySQL jar in the plugins folder. So I can just uh, call the uh, load JDBC. Um, and you see I pass a JDBC URL here. So JDBC my, MySQL localhost uh, 336, which is the MySQL port my Northwind database, my user, and my password. And then here in the second parameter, we can pass either a table name or a um, or select statement, which returns data, which you'll see in a second. So, and if I run this without any anything else, then I just get uh, uh, all the data back. So you see all the fields that we saw in the product table before here in MySQL you now get back uh, to the FJ. So you can also just use this to look at your relational database if you don't have another tool there. But we can also uh, just yield this row, which is this column here that is returned by this procedure. And for the instance, count how much data is in there, uh, 77 lines as you expected. And we can also say, okay, I want to see return keys of a row. So I want to see the columns uh, limit one. So I should see a list of columns here. And so now I can use this data to create data in Neo4j. So e the most uh, straightforward thing is to just create one product for, per, per row. So we just create one product here and set the whole um, row onto this product. So the whole map that is returned here uh, is just added as properties on our product. So all our nodes will have all these properties, uh, which is kind of really straightforward. So if I just run this, it creates these uh, 77 uh, product nodes here, and you can see them with the product name, uh, quantities, reorder levels, stock units, prices, and, uh, and so on. So I can do this for other, um, uh, other tables as well. So for instance, I can say here categories, and I just say, for instance, I create a category. But then I can, for instance, uh, choose uh, to um, just set a few uh, things like c.id as uh, row dot, so now I have to uh, describe categories. So I see I have category ID and category name. That's the only thing that's interesting for me here. Right now. So and uh, c.name is uh, row.categoryName. So I should get eight categories here. Let's see. So I have my categories here uh, and you see they have an ID and a name. And of course, I can uh, bring them together. So if I go back to the product table again, uh, I can take these products, which also have a category ID. Um, and with, with each row, we can actually find our category. Uh, we want to find our category where the ID is row dot 
category ID and uh, we want to find uh, the product where uh, the product ID um, is the same as row dot product ID. Um, and then we basically create a relationship between the two. So we can just uh, say this product is in category C. And so it creates the 77 relationships. And if I look at these now, then I see here nicely why category is forming these little uh, trees as well. Of course, you can also create self relationships and, and things like that. Uh, so for instance, if you look at the employee table, then you have uh, Uh, for instance, the self relationship that reports to employee again, and then you could use that to actually um, create this self relationship, which we won't do right now in a bit of time. So, so you can imagine now doing after you kind of model your graph, kind of pulling the data from a relation database, and and doing all of that together, and just really quickly to show you uh, that this is also possible. Um, with the um, with the select statement, I can also just say select star from products here, and then um, I get the same result. Um, basically, nothing now because we already had the categories. But um, if I return this, then you see that it's the same uh, result if I put in the table or any select statement that you can imagine. So oftentimes you don't want to put in your data uh, in here uh, with the SQL URL, uh, JDBC URL. So we can instead of this, we can also put in a parameter here, as you might remember. So we can just do param URL and then um, just put the URL there. And if I run this, I set the parameter and then we can basically just uh, use the URL parameter here. And it should look the same. And we can also put this uh, whole thing into our config. So I can uh, go into new for j config here. And if I put in apoc jdbc a name and URL, so then we can use this name, this nw, uh, to access this uh, jdbc URL. And uh, if you run this, and uh, then we could also say just nw here instead of URL, and then it would just pull this uh, connection information from the config as well. Okay, uh, the other statements. So the update one is pretty straightforward because it just writes updates to j uh, to to the relation database and returns the account. Uh, and the uh, load JDBC params. Um, basically allows you to put in a number of um, uh, of parameters here. For instance, I could say where uh, category ID equals one. Basically, the first parameter in the list is the first question mark, as you might remember from uh, relation databases. And if I run this, it only returns 12 rows here, and they should all have the category ID one. So if you check this, so we can also parameterize uh, SQL statements here that we want to return. Okay, and uh, with that, I just wanted to point you to the documentation. So in the documentation, we only uh, not only have the MySQL example, but also examples uh, for loading uh, data in batches, loading data from Cassandra, and, and so on, and also having a list of relation database drivers that you can use with your um, with your instance. Okay, and with that, uh, thanks for your uh, time. And uh, if you want to learn more, um, either come to our Slack channel uh, or go to this bit.ly address to find the uh, Epoch repository or join our YouTube channel for further updates on the series. Thank you.